Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your document for KDP publication. This is an Affinity Publish 2 tutorial designed for beginners. So if you're a bit more advanced, you might know all this stuff already, but if not, it's a good place to start. Setting up your document is the most important thing when it comes to designing your book. So you need to do it right. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your presets. So you've only got to click a button and the document is there ready to be filled in. This is the first of hopefully a series of videos where I take you through the basics of book design for KDP. And this step's the most important. When you first open Affinity Publisher 2, this is the screen you'll be confronted with. This is the new document screen. Down the left-hand side, there are other options. You can open, you can find your recent documents. You can, if you've saved templates or you've downloaded templates, you can access them through this panel. And if you have any samples, you can get them by clicking on the samples tab. But for starters, we're gonna concern ourselves with the new document. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of presets already included. For print, press ready, photos, web, devices and architectural because we're making books for kdp we're just going to be concerned with print really now if you look here you'll see that i've already got three presets this saves me a lot of time these are the three most common presets i use eight and a half by 11 inch nine, uh, six by nine and eight and a half by eight and a half these are already set up with the bleeds and the margins already configured so all i need to do is click what I want, press create, and the book's there ready to fill. And that will save you a lot of time. And in order to show you how to create your own presets, I'm going to make a new one. So we're going to decide what sort of trim we want. And that's really dictated by, first of all, the industry standards of what, you, what you're trying to publish. But also, it's limited by KDP's trim sizes. Now, there are a lot to choose from, and you can find them out by simply googling KDP trim size. And this is what we have. This is on the KDP website. I'll link to it in the description. So this is all of the trim sizes available from KDP, both in paperback and hardcover. The next column is the maximum amount of pages. Now the pages do influence the size of one of the margins or gutters. Uh, black ink, standard ink, and premium color ink. So these are all the figures you need to bear in mind. If you're going to make a standard colour book, there's got to be more than 72 pages on it. So for this book, I'm going to make a 5x8 book. So that's per page, the width is 5 inches and the height is 8 inches. So we'll just click on any of these. I'll click on, uh, I'll just keep this one selected. And we'll start filling in the information here. So we're going to be in inches, so that's fine. There are other options there, but we'll work in inches. And the page width was going to be five inches. The height is going to be eight inches. And as you update the numbers, you can see that this preview image changes, it gives you an indicator of what the page will look like. With the default master page and turn it on or off, I always have it on just because if it's there and I don't need it, it's fine. If it's not there and I do need it, it just takes it a little bit more setting up. The next section is the image placement. If you're using images, there are two options. You can either embed the image into the document or you can link it. If you embed it, the image actually goes into the document and it creates a larger file, but the, then the image is always in the document. If you were to use the linked option, You'd have a smaller file, which is great if you're making an 800 page book with full color pictures. But then if you move your pictures about on your hard drive, they become unlinked and you can't find them anymore. So because I don't use many images, I just keep it as embedded. The next option is the pages option. And this could be a matter of preference. I like to go to facing pages because sometimes I have elements that run across two pages. We can have facing page or just individual page. We'll leave it set up as facing. There are options where you may want to go individual, 
But as this is just a quick introduction to the document setup, we're going to leave it as facing now because that's that's the way you'll work in the majority of the time. You can also arrange it horizontally or vertically depending on where the binding's going to be. And again, in KDP, you'll use horizontally. Start on the right page or the left page. Again, you'll almost always start on the right hand page. And then you can add however many number of pages you want. Automatically set to one, and I just leave it at one. And I add more pages when I need them from the main document. On the next tab are your colour formats. There's a few different options. RGB is best used in uh, digital uh, on screen colours. CMYK is best used for print colours. And below it is the colour profile. Now there's lots of information on colour profiles if you want to go into the, into the depth of it. The US web code is uh, what's selected by standard and it works well for our needs so we'll keep it like that. Now the next two tabs are the important ones. We've got margins and we've got bleed. Now to find the margins you'll need for your page we'll go back to the KDP website and this little table here tells you everything you need to know. As you can see the more pages you have the bigger the inside gutter needs to be. Everything else stays the same but the inside gutter increases comparable to the number of pages. And that's obviously because the more pages there are glued into the spine, the less the less you see on the far left hand side of the page. So if you have a piece of paper and you fold it in half, you open it up, you'll see the centre of the page very easily. If you have a book and there are 600 pages in it and you open that up, you will not see the centre of the page. But for most cases, you're going to be doing a book that's under 150 pages. So the top line is really all you need, that there. So we'll start off with the margins. So the outside margin is a quarter of an inch. So that means that all of your important details have got to be a quarter of an inch from the edge of the page. Otherwise they might get chopped off. If you're using bleed and you want the images to float the edge of the page, that's fine. But if, if you've got text, it needs to be inside that margin just to be certain that it's not going to be chopped off. So the outside margin is a quarter of an inch. With bleed, it says it's 0 0.375. So you can tell there that the bleed is 0.125 of an inch. And that's important when it comes to adding the details in a second. The inside is always going to be 0.375, which is the exact same size as the outside margin plus the bleed. Coincidence? So now we've got these numbers, we'll add them into the document setup. So as you can see, I've already got them in because this is a, a preset that I've already used. So the inside is going to be 0 0.375. That is this part of the margin. Top, outer and bottom are all going to be 0 0.25. There's a chain here which you can click and unclick. If they're linked, it means whatever you put in one of the boxes will be repeated. I should have chosen a different number. Whatever you choose in one of the boxes will be repeated in all of them. Unlink them and you can write in independently. So that's the margin setup. As you can see, the margins are set up without bleed because the bleed is added separately. If you didn't have a bleed option, you'd have to factor in the bleed into the margin size. So the outer, bottom and top would all become 0 0.375. But we're not doing that because we've got bleed. And again, the link is still there. Click that and it links everything together. Unclick it and it doesn't. There is no bleed on the inner margin. No bleed there. Top, bottom and outer bleed are all 125. And that's it, we've set the document up now. All we need to do is click create a preset. And as you can see, it's got the last name that I saved it as. And you change the name to something that's informative so you know what's what. So I always use this size. So this is five inches by eight inches with bleed. 
you can change where you want it to be stored obviously we want it in the print section because that's where it's going to be and you can change the icon again this is going to be for print so we'll leave it as a page press ok and there's the preset there saved now every time you want to make a 5x8 book you just click on that press create and there's your book so that's it for today's video just a quick one on how to set your document in affinity publisher